Hello again, quick video for you on using SolidWorks sheet metal parts in Inventor 2017. So there's a few things we might want to do. We might want to flat pattern a SolidWorks sheet metal part in order to get a DXF out. We might want a 2D drawing of the flat pattern and folded model. We may even want to place a SolidWorks part directly into an assembly um, using any CAD in Inventor 2017 and not even have to translate it. So let's look at those kind of scenarios now. We've got a couple of example SOLIDWORKS files here. So first off, I'm just going to say file open and I'm going to choose SOLIDWORKS files only. And let's look at this simpler one first. So this is a single solid body sheet metal part um, from SOLIDWORKS. You can see it says SOLIDWORKS part file. I'm going to say OK to that. And here's where we get a choice, which is either to just reference the part the SOLIDWORKS part or to actually convert it to an inventor part file. Now if we hit the link icon at the top here we'll still create a uh, an inventor part file when we try to save this file but that part file will have a link contained within it to the SOLIDWORKS file and if the SOLIDWORKS file changes then the inventor file will change as well as including the flat pattern and any 2D drawings that are linked to it. Whereas if we hit the convert model icon here, it will translate it, the old school method, um, translate it into an inventor part file and there'll be no link created to the original SOLIDWORKS file. So let's just uh, say convert model in this case. And here we go, here's the part file. Let's just look at what would have happened if I hadn't hit convert and instead had referenced it. So if I say reference model, when we import this now, instead of getting features in the tree, what we actually get is a link to the SOLIDWORKS uh, part here. And if this file changes on the system, then the inventor file will change as well. So using either of these methods, we then have the ability to convert this to a sheet metal part and flatten it. So uh, first thing we would probably want to do is to check why is there two solid bodies in here. I'm just going to delete this solid body. Um, this appears to be some extra invisible geometry here perhaps. Um, so in order to do that, because I've referenced the SOLIDWORKS file, I'm just going to edit the import and choose what I actually want in there. So I'm just going to turn off this invisible geometry that I don't actually want in there and say OK. And now I've only got one solid body. OK. And now I'm going to convert this file to a sheet metal part. And it's asking me what is the base face. So I'm going to pick the base face here. And Inventor's telling me that it's a 0.5 mil thickness part. So if I say OK and right click and say measure, let's have a little look there. That is a 0.5 mil part. So Inventor's accurate in that case. And then I can just hit create flat pattern. There we go. OK, so it's flat pattern this out. And I can use this flat pattern on a drawing, annotate the, uh, the bend lines, all that kind of thing. So I can head back to the folded model now. OK, so that's method number one. If you've got a single solid body inside a part file, referencing it in Inventor. Let's close that one. Method number two, if I say open here, we're now opening a SOLIDWORKS file with more than one solid body in it. So if I, uh, I'll just convert it in this case, although both methods would still be perfectly suitable. Um, so I'll convert this in this case. And we can see here we've got two solid bodies. So this one here and this one here. Okay, um, So I can convert this to a sheet metal part and pick the base face just like before. Um, recognize the thickness is three millimeters. Say OK, let's just check that before we move on. I'm just going to measure the thickness of the part. It is actually three millimeters, so we're OK. But I can't actually create a flat pattern inside this part because there's two parts inside one part, if you see what I mean. So we have to use a technique in Inventor called make components. So if I hit make components and say I want a single part file for each of these two solid bodies, I'm just going to hit next, next on that and go with the defaults. And now what we've got is an assembly file with uh, two part files in it referencing those solid bodies. OK, so if I double click on this first part file, I can do exactly what we did before. I can say create flat pattern. That's then created me a flat pattern of that part, okay, which I could export, do whatever I want with. 
and if we go back to the assembly by closing this part if I double click on that second part there the little hem part in there then I can do the same thing I can say create flat pattern and there's my flat pattern of that one okay so when you tie this up with the uh, ability to link to a SOLIDWORKS model so that both of these part files would change now if the original um, SOLIDWORKS part changed on the system if I had imported it as a linked part that becomes very very powerful for multidisciplinary CAD environments as other users will be able to detail up your, your, uh, your sheet metal parts and reference them in their assemblies and so on and so forth so just the final tip here then is what's the difference between that and actually using a sheet metal part in an assembly well if I've got a um, an empty assembly here that I just create and now what I can actually do is use this place imported CAD files command in the assembly find the uh, the SOLIDWORKS part and actually just hit open and link to it directly within the assembly place that in here and now I don't have an inventor part in this in this inventor assembly I have a SOLIDWORKS part in this assembly okay um, so there's no actual inventor part created it's simply linked to SOLIDWORKS very powerful and very cool hope you enjoyed this video thank you